start my capture again. Okay. How weird. Uh, my I show you the uh, well, part two of the final exam review where we left off. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully I got the first part. Uh huh. Good thing it showed me a message actually. Uh, the older version didn't do that till I upgraded it. Ever since I upgraded it, I've been having problems with it. Okay. I probably need to go to the newest version of the Mac OS. That's the problem. I need to go out and buy Lion. <laughs> so, <laughs> good excuse right there. So what happens in this situation? We have integer PTR is equal to new integer. And we follow PTR and make it equal to 3. Oh, that's good. And then PTR is equal to new integer. Create a new one. Follow PTR and make it equal to 4. Oh, wait a minute. Well, now we got 3 and 4. Change the value here. We change the value. So we have a piece of information that's inaccessible. So it creates garbage, actually. It's an inaccessible memory piece that we've assigned with new integer, but we followed PTR here. We didn't, we didn't actually set it. We didn't set PTR. We created another space. So that's a, an example of an inaccessible object or garbage. Can't be used. Can't get at it. So here's our inaccessible object here. You want to know the terminology only because there's a couple of questions that are going to ask you, um, what is this? And it would be nice to say, it's an inaccessible object. <laughs> Instead of 50 other words, well, it's no longer available, and we can't get to it, and it's sitting around, but we can't use it. Just call it an inaccessible object. Memory leak. It's called a memory leak, actually, because this thinks it's being used, and we fill up the memory, and we leak it out. So essentially what ends up happening is we don't have any more available memory. Because the you know compiler the program is going to think it's being used. No, we're not actually using it for anything. We're allocating and allocating and never deallocating. So there's our inaccessible object uh, making an object inaccessible. We just saw how it actually worked a few minutes ago. Here's another example of it. And there's our explanation of the memory leak. It's the loss of available memory space that occurs when dynamic da allocated memory is allocated but never deallocated. And here is leaving a dangling pointer. So another problem. Not the same as the inaccessible object. So here we have a pointer that points to a dynamically allocated memory that's been deallocated. When we use delete here, we said delete PTR2. PTR2 is left dangling. That's why we say PTR2 is equal to null. If we make it equal to null, then we go, oh, it doesn't point to anything. <laughs> if we just said PTR is equal to null, and we don't want to point to anything more, but we didn't use deletes. We skipped the delete. Then we've created an inaccessible object. But now we've deleted it, but we just didn't do that little step. So if we, when we do the step, we have said it's null. Huh? No, this just basically causes a dangling pointer, which is essentially you use the pointer. It's kind of like using a, a, a variable that's been declared but not initialized. And you say, oh, it's printed to the screen. But it's not, it's not valid information it's printing to the screen. So this one's just dangling out in the space. It doesn't really point to anything that's correct. It's kind of like saying integer i. Oh, C out i. <laughs> Compiler's going to say, hey, you know what? You're using it without being initialized. We don't know what the value is. It's going to actually be the same thing. It's going to be pointing to garbage. It's dangling. We haven't assigned it a value yet. So we assign it a value, it doesn't actually open up the memory space and put the number in it. So it essentially is the same concept, but it's just not pointing anything good. So it doesn't really cause a problem if we don't use it. There's some people that don't like to say PTR is equal to null. They don't want to do it. <laughs> but because then if you print it out and said null, oh wait a minute. What happened? Oh, we forgot to we forgot a line that was supposed to reassign it. Uh oh. That could actually come in handy when, uh, especially when working with a linked list as an example. Now we have the end. Of, we deleted something off of the end of the list. Well, we have it equal to null. That means there's nothing left. We're at the end of the list, and then we can check for null and say no more, no more pieces of memory here. We're done. So why a deconstructor is needed? Well, that's because we've got these things, these deletes. We want to make sure we can fit those deletes in. Uh, so when it a dynamic array is an example. A class variable goes out of scope. Memory space, the data members the size of the pointer array is deallocated. 
So, but the dynamic array that array points to is not automatically deallocated, so we do it for automatic deallocation. And this is what the destructor actually looks like. It has this tilde in front of it. The tilde says it's a destructor. So that's important to know. Because um, you, uh, you should be able to look at a piece of code and identify what the destructor looks like, <laughs> what a constructor looks like. There's no code that has any. There's code that has a destructor in it, but there's no code that has a uh, destructor. So it's the same as the same name as the constructor. Same name as the class. This little tilde. I think they call in Spanish. They call it a tilde. Is this call a tilde in English too? I don't know. <laughs> all I know is it's from my Spanish class. That's all I remember. It or above the ends and stuff. The tildes. <laughs> so. Yeah, a long time ago I took Spanish. <laughs> so. Okay, for the final exam, you'll have to write source code using pointers and dynamic memory. Eh, one ex one question. Actually, how'd you do it? Questions related to the topic are mostly multiple choice or true false. So believe it or not, that was it. That's the entire exam. It's not too bad. It too covers everything. Pages. What? Too many pages. Too many pages? It's only three. You should have seen it before. You should have seen it before I stripped it. I, you know, I, I started feeling guilty. And I went, oh, it's going to be too hard. Compared to the software engineering class, this is a lot harder. But it's 25% of the grade. Software engineering is only 10%. <laughs> 25 points and I gotta make it substantial right so. but it's really not bad it's only eight questions long <laughs> I'm sorry did you say what's question I already gave you question number one no. <laughs> I think I gave you question number two as well that one has the word while in it while loop question number three is a bunch of declarations declare a bunch of objects of this objects of that number four that's the structure question I told you you're gonna get Declare a t structure type, um, and then uh, you know the name that I want you to declare it as, and all the th things I want you to put in it. Uh, the next one is, uh, oh yeah, what is wrong with the following code segment? Next one is, <laughs> what does the following code segment do? These are all A, Bs, and Cs, and multiple choice. Oh, then we get to match the following terms with the definitions, and then match the following terms with the definitions. <laughs> some of them are pointer related, some of them aren't. And wait a minute, where's oh, one of the, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, declare a bunch of stuff has a pointer or two in it. So you have to, also you have to write a pointer variable, is what you gotta do. It's actually not too bad, it's pretty easy, actually. Now that I think, now that I've been going over it a couple of times, I, I kind of think. It's very straightforward. It's probably easy. If this is your first C++ course, it's probably not as easy as if you have taken a C++ course before. But some of you guys have already taken a C++. No? No C++? Then you might find it challenging. <laughs> but it should be alright. It should at least be a good measurement of what you've learned in the course, hopefully. So. Questions? I just noticed. I just noticed. I didn't get my recording. The poor people at home <laughs> are going to have to. I don't see it anywhere here, unless it just picked up where it left off. So you guys sitting here, I got the valuable information about the exam. Everybody else is going to have to look at the uh, the video, the second half. All the stuff I said in the beginning that wasn't recorded. I don't see the file. It usually puts the file out on my desktop. I don't see the file. Well, that's your benefit for showing up today. <laughs> but it's okay, unless you guys want me to go through it all over again. Nah, I didn't really say that much. I didn't give away all the answers. So, we're done for today, unless you guys have any questions on it. No? Yeah, I assume you got the final exam schedule. And you know what days you can show up? Yeah, it's pretty lenient, actually. You can go you can go two weeks in a row. I think I'm going to be bored silly after sitting here for eight hours a day. Two Mondays and two Wednesdays. But if you want to take all the exams on Monday the 8th, you can. If you want to take yours on the 8th, 17, you can. You can. Take it on this day if you want. As long as it's one of the days in the schedule, you do not have to get prior approval. So you can show up at 9 o'clock in the morning if you want to and take it before work. Or you can take it up to 5 o'clock. 
I'm going to be gone by 5. Okay, once we have questions, we're done. See you next week.